in the last lecture we have discussed about the bacteria we have discussed when we talk about bacteria we have discussed the structure of the bacteria the uh, useful aspect harmful aspects of the bacteria even we have discussed about the respiration the way of the reproduction of the bacteria now in this lecture we will be discussing about the next group and that is fungus obviously now in this lecture we are going to discuss about the fungus useful aspects and the harmful aspect but before going to the useful and the harmful aspect we need to know what is fungus how the structure is whether they are uni or multicellular or both even we need to know the structure the way of the respiration and all after discussing all the things then we will be discussing about the useful and the harmful aspects of the fungus let's begin with fungus now when we talk about fungus the body of the fungus is not is not differentiated into root stem or leaves is not differentiated into root stem or leaves this word not over here is very very important that the body is not differentiated into root stem or leaves it even does not have chlorophyll chlorophyll absent chlorophyll is absent when i say chlorophyll is absent it is very very clear that the mode of nutrition won't be and can't be autotrophic the mode of nutrition can't be autotrophic so the mode of nutrition will be what obviously it will be heterotrophic mode of nutrition hetero mode of nutrition i think this one is very clear when we talk about autotrophic mode of nutrition auto means self and tropic means nutrients or the way of the nutritions so the mode of nutrition when we say it is the, these are autotrophs or autotrophic mode of nutrition that means they can produce or they can make their own food but here i am saying these are heterotrophic or they are heterotrophs or the mode of nutrition is heterotrophic that means they cannot prepare their own food and this point is very very clear from the absence of the chlorophyll we know that the chlorophyll is absent they cannot prepare their own food and that means they are heterotrophic or the mode of nutrition is heterotrophic and they are heterotrophs now in heterotrophic they can be both they can be both means they can be they can follow parasitic mode of nutrition or even saprophytic mode of nutrition we have discussed the meaning of the parasitism and or we can say parasitic and the saprophytic mode of nutrition the next point we need to discuss is now how the body structure is is it primitive they are prokaryo pro i'm so sorry they are prokaryotes or are they eukaryotes so these are eukaryotes are eukaryotes
and when I say they are eukaryotes that means they have nucleus and when they have nucleus that means they are not prokaryotes. Pro means primitive and karyotes means nucleus and here when I am saying that they are eukaryotes when I am saying that they are eukaryotes that means the nucleus is present and prokaryotes pro primitive and karyotes means nucleus. So, bacteria were we, when we are we were discussing about the bacteria we have discussed this that the bacteria are prokaryotes, but these one are eukaryotes. So, eukaryotes have nucleus and the material is chromatin material is found inside the nucleus. The body structure can be like they can be unicellular can be unicellular like yeast they can be unicellular like yeast and they can be multicellular that means they can be either uni or multicellular they can be uni or can be multicellular can be multicellular like mushrooms they can be unicellular or they can be multicellular these are the general characteristic features of the fungus these are the very basic characteristic features we will just talk about this again in a form of the gist first of all the body is not differentiated into root stem or leaves the chlorophyll is absent now this chlorophyll is absent this single point can suggest all the next point when the chlorophyll is absent that means they are not autotrophs that means they are heterotrophs and the mode of nutrition can be parasitic, parasitic or saprophytic and they are eukaryotes can be unicellular or multicellular the structure can be of a single cell or the structure can be like they can be uh, multicellular made up the body can be made up of many cells. Now, we will talk about specially about one fungus. So, now we will be talking about mouths. When we talk about moles, the general characteristic feature, the general characteristic feature will be almost same. That means what I am talking, what I am saying that what will be same, this mould, first of all these are known as bre bread mould, but it is not the case that they are found only on bread, bread, but they are or they can be seen on the leather uh, things like maybe shoes, belt, purse, especially when the moisture is also present and the temperature is also little high. That means warm and humid temperature is very very suitable for them to grow. It is known as bread mold, but they are not only found on the bread mold. Now, when we talk about the structure, first of all we will write over here the first point from or grow I can write grow on bread leather fruits vegetables 
also on the trees where the shady dummy dam places are there so even these can harm the trees also now there are many places where these fungus can be seen now we will be talking in detail about the mouths so what actually mouths are for this i just need to clean this so that i can start with the the next uh, now whole complete board will be there to discuss so please note these points so that we can talk in detail about the next point we are discussing about the mouths and i'll be writing the second point that where it can be found it can be found in dark nem and warm places it can be found in the dark them and warm places now we need to talk about the structure especially i'll be talking about the rhizopus and these are actually thread like structure and in between certain black color structures can be seen will see in the diagram now what exactly these are so these are actually thread like structure these are thread like structure and these thread like structure are known as hyphae before writing this i need to explain with the help of the diagram so now these over here we can find certain structures here also we can find certain structures like this these are the single very minute structures here also we can have the same thing these are very very minute thread thin structures now we are going to discuss about these parts now i am writing over here that these are thread like structures which is known as hyphae known as hyphae now what is the other structure first of all these all thread like structures are known as hyphae now this part we are actually now we are discussing the structure of the rhizopus what is there in this all these are the thread like structures and in between this thread like structures we can find certain rectit structures also and this one is known as sporangiophore now along with this is a swollen part this swollen part from the tip it is known as this one i'm talking about this is this 
structure is sporangiophore and this one from the tip it is known as sporangium. In this sporangium very minute black color structures are there and these are known as spores. We are discussing about the bread mould and these bread mould grow on the dim and dark and warm places. These structures are like thread. If you try to see them, these will be obviously under the microscope I am talking. These will be seen as the what thread like structures and it is not the case that only you will see the two strands over here, you will find many strands you will find many strands over here many strands and along with that here also you will find the spores many these kind of structures are visible see that these structures the, these part this part this this part is known as hyphae and from here you can see certain elongated structure this elongated structure is known as for sporangiophore this elongated structure is known as this part is known as sporangiophore at the tip you will find a kind of a swelling structure and this rounded or swelling structure is known as sporangium and this whole part this whole part is known as mycelium so it is known as mycelium so when we talk about what does the mycelium consist of Mycelium consists of the hypha, it consists of the sporangiophore, it consists of the sporangium and it then consists of the spores. Now what is the meaning of these spores? What is, what are these spores? These spores are actually the way of a mean of reproduction. When after this part get mature, this part get mature and it bursts and after bursting the spores get scattered the spores get scattered and whenever these spores get favorable condition which are the which conditions do they need they need little uh, dark damp and warm place little moisture little dark little damp and temperature should also be there then they will start growing and again we will find a thread like structure and you might have seen this uh, fungus uh, like you know everybody has seen this fungus and this is very common one even if you want to see it and you think that you have not seen it earlier just take a slice of the bread and apply little gem on it or maybe little chutney or something like that sprinkle a drop of water on that and keep it for a day or two or three you will find certain white color thing certain white color thing uh, like cotton growing on that now this white color thing is nothing but this structure and when it is seen under the microscope you will see that a hypha is there this long erected structure sporangiophore is there and this at the tip you will find that this is a swollen part a rounded structure which is known as sporangium now inside this sporangium are the spores and these spores are the means of uh, reproduction after maturity this part the sporangium burst out and the spores scattered out and 
whenever these pores get a favorable condition it will give rise to a new mycelium this whole part is known as together I am talking about it is known as mycelium now we need to talk about first of all we have discussed about the general structures of the fungus these uh, how they are they are not differentiated into roots leaves and stem they do not have chlorophyll that means they are not autotropic they are heterotropic their mode can be parasitic or saprophytic they can be unicellular like yeast we will draw the structure we will discuss the structure of the yeast also they can be unicellular they can be multicellular and the places which they prefer to grow is little bit with our temperature the high temperature and little moisture may should be dark in them places and when we talk about the structure this is the structure of the rhizopus now we'll talk about the next step or next point we will be discussing about now we'll talk about the reproduction we have discussed few points about the reproduction also but then we will talk about certain other points for the reproduction please note these points we are discussing about the reproduction in rhizophus we are talking about reproduction reproduction can be both asexual and sexual asexual is the very common one asexual is a very common one one means generally asexual reproduction takes place but in the adverse conditions even the sexual reproduction can be seen we have discussed about asexual reproduction asexual reproduction takes place with the help of the spores as we have discussed spores spores give rise to new mycelium in favorable conditions this means when here we know that we have got spores we have got spores and sporangium on bursting sporangium it will burst that means sporangium will burst and spores will be out sporangium will burst and the spores will out and the spores will again give rise to a new mycelium on the arrival of the favorable conditions now what will happen if the favorable conditions are not there then the sexual reproduction takes place now in this the two strands the two strands this is one strand the two strands when co will come closer this is the first one here we have the same structure the hypha the sporangiophore and then sporangium we i have i have drawn the sporangium over here and the sporangiophore now the second will also come like this here we have got the mycelium 
this will come closer this is the very first stage or the step now in between over here the the formation of the cells will take place the zygote will be formed and with before forming the zygote i would like to explain you that in from this two strands from this two strands one act as the male and the other act as the female first of all what will happen the two strands will come together out of this two strands one will act as the male and the other will act as the female so i have drawn over here the two strands have come together out of which one will be acting as the male and the other will be acting as the female now after coming after coming closer like when the two have the two strands have come closer to each other now the next step i need to draw is now the formation of gametes will takes place the gametes will be formed over here the formation of gametes takes place and this is our strand now this strand gametes i will draw with some other colors so that it become visible these are the gametes first of all the two strands come closer to each other and it is not the case that only the two strands are coming closer to each other this will the same step will takes place in many 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 strands but the germination or we can say the all these won't be able to give rise to a new mycelium but only very few will be able to survive in the first condition the first diagram the two strands are coming closer to each other out of this two strands one is going to act as the male strand and the other is going to act as the female strand now the formation of the gametes takes place and after the formation of the gametes these two gametes will fuse these two gametes will fuse and over here these are our strand positive and negative and over here these gametes will fuse to form a zygote now the zygote has formed now the zygote will develop and form zygote spore it will form again the this two strands are there and this zygote spore will be formed now it will again develop into the new sporangium and the mycelium or the premycelium but all will not be able to survive only one or two or very few out of these will be able to survive so again i can write over here first of all the two strands are coming close to each other one is going to act as the male strand the other will be acting as the female strand the zygote formation takes place but before zygote formation obviously the gametes will be formed now these two gametes fuses and due to the fusion of the gametes the zygote is formed now the zygote give rise to zygospore and again it give rise to a new strand where we can see in the beginning the strand is known as promycelium or this part is known as promycelium which again uh, give rise to a new uh the new cycle or the new uh, phase starts now 
we are discussing the reproduction in the reproduction i said that the reproduction can be of both the types the asexual reproduction and the sexual reproduction when we talk about asexual reproduction asexual reproduction is the most common method of the reproduction and it is seen very commonly how does it takes place it takes place by the means of the spores when we talk about spores from where does the spores comes we know that this is the this part swollen part is sporangium and in this sporangium the spores are present on maturity this will burst when it will become mature it will burst and these spores will come out these spores will again form the mycelium but always remember after getting favorable condition or in favorable condition only these will grow now when the favorable conditions are not available sometimes the sexual reproduction is also seen now when we talk about sexual reproduction how does the sexual reproduction takes place in sexual reproduction i have discussed that two strands will come together out of this two the one will be acting as the male strand and the other will be acting as the female strand the formation of the gametes will takes place we all know that when the gamete fuses they form zygote from the zygote zygospore is formed and again the promycelium or the mycelium is formed and again this this cycle continues so this was about the reproduction rhizopus is also one of the bread maul and it is not the thing that it will be seen only on the bread it can be seen like when we see this is suppose this is a structure of the bread here you will find certain cotton like structure to keep uh, you know if you apply butter or chutney or something on that and if you sprinkle water and keep it for a day or three you will find certain white cotton in structure what is that structure it is this along with the hypha and the other structures and this the important thing is that commonly it is found on the bread but it is not the thing that it is seen only on the bread but you can see the fungus even on the leather articles maybe for shoes even you know if you uh, talk about the leather jackets you will be able to find the fungus over there also if it is ke not kept properly if the if the shoes are wet and sealed in the box you will find on the leather shoes also you will find such kind of white structure will develop which is nothing but the fungus now we will talk about the next point and uh, please note this thing